Okay, so you can see there that's moving, see? So it's uh, happened on a few points where it's uh, after uh, splitting from the board and uh, there's a, an issue there because obviously if that's not meeting the trace we're going to have problems and plenty of them. Okay, as you can see from that there the capacitor wasn't exactly bonded to the board. See, the idea is that when you have a capacitor or component, you want to make sure that it makes a decent chemical bond to the board. And if it doesn't, and you then gently move it, you'll notice that it's, it's rocking about and you don't want that. Now, in that video I just showed you there, um, you can see that the contacts are also broken on the board too. Um, so that's a problem. So that's why the actual board wasn't working. And that's why we were having some, some issues with it. So, if you're having a problem with the uh, H2 error code that's coming up um, all you got to do is basically change the caps on the board and make sure you do a good job of it. So I'm going to zoom out and I'm going to show you what I was using to do that job properly and uh, how I achieved it properly. You've got your soldering going which makes a lovely vacuumy sucky noise and you basically this probe is, is, is hot at the end here ah not at the minute um, this probe gets very hot you basically place that on top of the piece you want to take out gently do it and zzz, suck and away it goes, it sucks out the solder out of the, out of the part, you can then you know, release the part off the board once that's done you then get your soldering iron with your new component as demonstrated here you then place that through the holes so this is not the right capacitor for this hole just in case you're wondering uh, and then you will basically come to the back of the board you will get your soldering iron and boop, tip, tip, heat the legs up tip your uh, solder wire to the other side of the leg and boom, Bob's your uncle also make sure you get a bit of flux on there, I'll show you the flux now so I used a lead free solder so I'm going to get that for you now I should have had it out already but there you go Red free solar, there it is, and flux paste. I actually was using flux, uh, liquid flux, which I have here. I'll get that thing out of it. Um, I, I used to use the flux paste, which I'll show you now in a second. I'll show you what I was using. So, this is the new stuff. Um, I was using uh, this stuff, which is lead solar. So this is all lead solar. Um, so this, is all, this is all lead solar. So, basically, I, I've quit using this. I don't use it anymore. Um, I may use it for something in the future if I have to. So I basically got rid of this and started using the lead free stuff. Now, basically, the big problem with these boards is you need to have good soldering technique. So, how do you get good soldering technique? Get a junk board uh, of some description and start sucking components off the board. Uh, and once you've taken components off the board, start putting them back on again and just practice. Now one of the things with the new type of solar from what I've been led to believe and I think it's true is with the older stuff it will be shiny on the back of the board whereas the new stuff it will be dull. This is all lead here so it's all fairly shiny whereas the new stuff tends to be a bit duller. But as you see in that video a little bit earlier on just make sure that when you jiggle the component gently and um, this one actually probably doesn't do it. See this board here is all screwed up as well. Uh, not by me by the way. Um, you see there it's moving. You don't want that. That basically means that this particular uh, joint hasn't been bonded to the board correctly. And you don't want that. You want to make sure it's bonded to the board correctly. Um, like for example the, the big baby here. Like you know you can see it's not moving. Okay, the whole board is moving literally as you try to free it from there as if it were. That's the way it should be. It should be chemically bonded to the board. If it isn't, then it's a bad solder joint and it's not going to make good contact. Hence you get that SBQR error, which is so the this error is the you get. lead free um, solder wire. Um, so this is actually quite a this is the thick one. This is the one mil. I have a 0.8 there as well, which I was using. This is a bit too thick. It's for the for the nib on this, the pencil as they call it. Uh, it's a bit too thick, so it doesn't really melt it very well. So I have a 0.8 there uh, solar wire. So you need to pick the right tip um, with the right uh, soldering uh, wire for the job that you're doing. Um, so you pick 
the right thicknesses if it were, you know. Again, there's people online better qualified to explain it to you than I will ever be. Um, I'm a, a mere amateur when it comes to this. But, you know, this thick wire would be great for, you know, filling in the gap on, let's say, the big fella up here. So it'd be ideal if it actually get, need to feed in a fair bit of solder wire. Whereas for one of the smaller components down here, there's a good chance that it'd be, be too much and it'd end up, you know, linking this trace to this trace and you don't want that, okay? So you don't want to be linking them together. So you, you go for the correct thickness for the job in hand, okay? So that's the thick one. Uh, yeah, the thin one's off somewhere else, doesn't really matter. Um, again, with the capacitors, uh, just make sure and check that uh, apparently elite capacitors are crap, by the way. Um, doesn't doesn't really matter in this case either they were going to work or they weren't so I was using a few of them in some of the, the boards that were a bit junky and um, actually on this board here I actually used uh, I actually used components which are 35 volts instead of I think it's 20 volts in the original I think it's 20 volts there I'm just checking here 16 volts is the original so I have 36 volts there that doesn't really matter but the microfarad must be 2200 just as the original were so see that there 35 volt 220 okay so in other words whatever capacitor was in the machine originally you must replace with the same capacitor so 400 volts 100 uf that could be 500 volts but it still has to be 100 uf you can't change that value but you can upgrade this value you can't downgrade it you can upgrade it a bit but again if you start upgrading you'll find that the capacitors get bigger and bigger and bigger as they get as they get bigger because obviously they have to have more you know ability to store that power somewhere so right um yeah i just wanted to explain one more little thing about the actual laser drives and the lasers contained within them so um yeah let's just have another quick discussion about this laser drive we'll make it a, a second video so uh, this video is just about the h2 problem so what's the answer the answer is good equipment okay good soldering station a good soldering iron uh, apologies for that beep one of the things as well is that you don't necessarily have to go for the weller. That's not uh, uh, necessarily something you have to go for. Go for a cheaper brand if, if your budget allows. Uh, or go for this one if your budget allows, I should say. Um, I did actually contact an English guy in relation to a cheaper brand before I purchased this one. Um, this actually replaces an old uh, TCP1, I think it's called, from this company. And uh, I had to get rid of it because I just couldn't get the tips anymore. Uh, so that's why I went for this fella. But that's also the reason why I went for this fella, is because you can get the tips for it. So, you know, to get the tips for this, you know, to change one, I should say, just unscrew that, take the tip out, get your new tip, put it in, put the top on, gently screw it back down, boom ready to go again so you can actually do that while it's still hot because you can actually unscrew that you know that could drop off you know put the new one in and away you go so it's nice and easy so in other words you can get the tips for this uh, I couldn't get the tips for the cheap one now the guy was importing them into England and I basically said look I see your soldering iron on there I like it it's 60 euros worth um, but I want to know if I can get tips for it because the very thing that's going to wear out or break or corrode are these tips and he said uh, no I don't sell the tips so straight away I went right I'm not going on that silliness you know um, because I have uh, uh, one from uh, Lidl here uh, soldering iron which actually I haven't used uh, because uh, I can't get tips from uh, same thing so like where do you get tips for the Lidl machine I'm assuming if you, you know the answer put the old uh, link down below and I'll uh, happily uh, promote it for you um, but I can't so I went for this machine because you can get the tips and that's the most important part of it it's great having the digital readout obviously and it's great having the uh, ability to set the temperature uh, on the machine and the same as this you can set the temperature uh, up and down you know i have it set to 450 and 450 i think on both it is so a quick tip and away you go but like i said there's people in here better qualified than me to go through this so i'm not even going to do that because uh, i just don't want to embarrass myself um, i'm happy to not show you as if it were but um there you are so, right, okay, uh, if you don't want to buy one of these, you can buy desoldering wick, by the way, um, which is a little bit more laborious, and you can use up an awful lot of wick taking off some of these bigger components, um, so uh, just watch out for that. Um, but like, with these fellas here, they're, they're fairly robust, the traces are fairly robust, so I've, I've even heated a leg, gently jiggled, heat, 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 and then pulled them out, you know. And never really much damage is going to happen to these because they're so big. It's only the smaller little fellas where you really got to suck out all that solar. If you yank it, you are going to break those traces, and that is a guarantee. Anyway, 
that's the answer to the H2 problem. Uh, thank you for watching this video. Please um, like and subscribe. Or leave your comments below. If you didn't like it, thumbs down. If you do like it, thumbs up, please. And uh, yeah, I'd like to say thank you to everybody who subscribed to me so far and shown some confidence in these videos. And uh, let's see if we get to uh, 300 subscribers. Woohoo! Right, see you later. Good luck. Bye bye.